Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. We have a special treat today. Subscriber Fan of the Gourmet has made a book recommendation and provided us with a copy of the book, along with the rarest of all things, an author's permission to look it over. So today we are looking at Cowpoke Clyde and Dirty Dog, written by Lori Mortensen and illustrated by Michael Allen Austin. This book is not from my childhood. I have tried very hard not to read it since it arrived. I did do a little looking up of the author. Apparently she uses a lot of rhyming. I have said in previous recordings that children's books must rhyme. So we're going to see how much I trip over this and how much of a laugh it's going to be. Yep, it's a first for both of us. And once again, pardon for my voice. <laughs> I'm probably not going to be talking much this time. Unless he's doing a southern drawl for me. He's been doing very well on a cowboy voice. I am not going to try for any sort of southern drawl. So if you hear one from me, it is entirely accidental. So I hope you enjoy this sponsored episode of Ember's Reading Room, courtesy of Fan of the Gourmet. Uh, that, that breaking in the cover noise. <laughs> should always read dedications. For my daughter, Jamie, who used to wish she had all the dogs in the world, LM, so that would be the author. For Riley, who has taught me to face each day with unrestrained joy, MMA, that would be the illustrator. Cowpoke Clyde propped up his feet. His house was clean, his chores complete. He'd even washed the kitchen floor and shooed the horseflies out the door. <laughs> yeah, and she's laughing. And he's ha he certainly has his feet up. Nice, exaggerated, illustrated style. This is nothing like how my children's books were illustrated at the time. Then, right behind his cooking pot, he spied one thing he'd plumb forgot. Old dog, his faithful snore and friend, all caked with mud from end to end. Clyde looked around his tidy shack. I'll scrub him down, then come on back. Eat my soup and take a nap. Why, washing dog go be a snap. Dun, dun, dun. I do not know of any instance, fictional or real, where washing a dog is a breeze. And once again, I'd like to point out the illustrated style is very nice and exaggerated. It's almost like it's a fish eye lens with how exaggerated proportions are. But also a lot of attention to detail because this pot is so shiny that dog is reflected in it. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> Clyde set his hat and grabbed a rope, filled some buckets, snatched the soap. But right before he sprung his plan, old dog woke up and off he ran. Yeah. Okay, let the hijinks begin. Spilling all the black bean soup, shooting through the chicken coop. Chicken fur and feathers flew, stirring up a filthy brew. Chicken fur and feathers, that almost sounds like a convention. <laughs> Gadzooks, yelled Clyde, this ain't no joke. Come back here, boy, and get your soak. But Dog ignored his mighty pleas. Instead, Dog left a trail of, oh boy, the page is trailing off. Fleas. Yeah, I had a, with the way it was rhyming, I had a feeling it was going to be fleas. Well, the English language only has so many rhyming words, so... Actually, it's quite a few. Most people don't, just don't realize it. Like, and people think certain words don't rhyme. The word orange has a rhyming word to it. It has two. But a word that doesn't have a rhyming word? Wolf. <laughs> but back to the fleas. Pesky fleas that jumped and bit. Fleas that caused a scratch and fit. Clyde called the dog, don't run away, come get your bath, and then we'll play. Dog paid no mind, so with a cry, Clyde swung his rope and let it fly. Straight at that ornery, dirty dog, but it missed his mark and roped a... Hog. <laughs> uh, could be frog, but on a farm, I'm, I'm going to say Lux is correct. Also... There's a butt of a pig rod there. <laughs> In the illustration, yes. Oh, well, I gotta go back a page. Do we have that same kind of... Oh, 
think we really got the same kind of hint for the fleas. Nope. Alright. Hog. Yes, Lux was right. <laughs> a hog so big it snapped the rope. A hog that skittered in the soap. Soon chicken fleas and one fat hog were getting soaked instead of dog. That does not look like a happy hog. Yeah, nope. Clyde curled his lips and set his brow. He'd get that dog some way, somehow. Come on now, boy, he called real sweet. Come here and get your favorite treat. I got a bone, some jerky too. Smell it? See, it's just for you. Ooh. Oh boy. Yeah, a bone, nice piece of jerky, and a bucket of soap water behind his back. And a rooster on his head. Oh, we did go through the chicken coop. Yep. Dog sniffed the air across the flats. But instead of dog, Clyde got six. Oh my god, it's gonna be cats. Because there's a cat tail. <laughs> oh, the author and the illustrator work really well together here. Cats. Oh my goodness, insanity on this page. Lots and lots of wet cats. Six cats that hissed and fluffed their tails. Six cats that toppled soapy pails. Now chickens, fleas, six cats, a hog, were getting soaked instead of dog. Oi. Also, not a nice cat. This ginger-colored one up here is pouring the bucket down onto that gray. Yep. It almost looks like this one came shooting out of that bucket. Yes, yeah, this other bucket here. And then only one of them has the bone. I don't know where the jerky went. Mm. Pigs running off. Chickens are running amok. Clyde came up with the perfect trick. He climbed aboard his wagon quick. This'll fool old dog, he cried. Get up now, boy. Let's take a ride. Wow, that's cold. <laughs> Come on, boy. Let's go for a ride. Let's <laughs> go for a ride. Oof. Dog circled round and twitched an ear. Clyde bowed his time till dog came near. And just like some pathetic fool, Clyde sneezed and startled his old... Heel. Mm-hmm. Also, there's a cat under the wagon. That's not safe. <laughs> mule! A mule that brayed and broke the hitch. A mule that kicked Clyde in a ditch. Now chickens, cats, a mule, a hog, were getting soaked instead of dog. Apparently we lost the fleas. That's something, at least. Fleas are gone. Yep, yeah, that's a plus. Mm, Clyde looks mad. Clyde cursed the mule, tucked in his shirt, wiped off feathers, fur, and dirt. Fine, he yelled. I don't care none. He kicked a pail. Old dog had won. Clyde shooed the chickens, the cats, and hog, and swore one day he'd get that dog. That's when it hit him, like a joke. Forget it, dog. I'll take a soak. Looks like dog's making off with his hat. <laughs> uh -huh. He cleared the mess and grabbed some grub, heated water, filled the tub. Then soaking sweet beneath the moon, he warbled out a cowpoke tune. A tune that rattled like a snake. A tune that set the stars to shake. Apparently he's very good at tunes. Also, apparently children's books do tend to feature bathtub scenes. Pantaloon also had one. Mm. Then lightning quick, a howling sound, split the night and shook the ground. And with an awful splash, Clyde knew he weren't alone. Now there's was two. Ooh. Two that soaked beneath the moon. Two that liked to howl and croon. And ever since that fateful night, cowpoke Clyde and dog don't fight. Because when they're filthy, head to toe, Clyde and dog know where to go. And so does everyone else by the final picture. Which is the mule, the hog, and two cats in the tub with another cat outside the tub stalking a rubber ducky, two chickens in the air, Another chicken on top of the hog. And Clyde and Dog standing there going, Isn't it our turn? 
who I mean, actually, they've even got the towels. Even though Clyde's mostly turned away from us, based on how his cheekbones look, I think he's smiling. Oh, probably. He wanted everything clean. And here's finally some things that are cleaning themselves. Mm-hmm. So, what did you think? And I'll share my thoughts. <laughs> that was fun. A lot of rhyming. And the way this is laid out with the timing... And yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> My rhyming's bad. Please don't let it make you sad. Oh, God, God. <laughs> this one is laid out very well to be read aloud to children because you have those dynamic pauses before you turn the page where you could get the kids to play in and make the guesses of what happens on the next page. What's the word? What's going on? And speaking of dynamic, the art is very dynamic and fun to look at and it uses a lot of posing to point you in the directions you're supposed to look when you're looking at the page. Yeah, the images are very well staged. Because if you look at this one where we, we just flip back to the page where it says cats, the line of the water actually draws you to the next page. So you first see this big cat, and it draws you to here, and you follow it up here to this other cat who's pouring the bucket of water, then you come back and move on. Then once you've had a time to rest here, you get to look at all the other little details that's going on. Yes, and another thing is the text is incorporated into the illustrations. It's overlaid against a wall or against the sky, and the, the rhyming words, the lead-ins to the next page, are done in a different font, and they're big and really draw your attention to them. But you don't have that disconnect that the other books that I've been doing so far have had, where the picture and the words are separate. There's a page or a section of words, and then there's a page or a section of text. Each of these pages is full color, full imagery. It's also delightful enough for not only the kids to enjoy it, but we enjoyed it too. And we're adults. I can tell you that this is probably not the type of book I would have read as a kid. I don't recall really having comedic books in my lineup. There were aspects of them that were comedic. Like and a tortoise, I believe it was, trying to fly. Yes, and Pantaloon, the dog, wanting to be a baker. But for the most part, might seem to have a slightly more serious tone and a little, or a little more lesson heavy. I don't know that I would say there's a whole lot of lessening over this. Clyde tried a lot of different tricks and they didn't work. And he got what he wanted after he gave up. I mean, the final page ends on a positive note, because when they're filthy head to toe, they know exactly where to go, meaning that Dog has accepted that when you're dirty, you take a bath, which is technically a children's lesson, because a lot of children's media seems to focus on getting kids to take baths. Mm -hmm. This has been our reading and review of Cowpoke Clyde and Dirty Dog by Lori Mortensen and illustrated by Michael Allen Austin. Again, thank you to Fan of the Gourmet for the recommendation and for providing the book. We will include a link to both the author and illustrator's website down below. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please check out other entries in the Embers Reading Room series, share with friends, subscribe, Check out other content on our channel and leave a friendly comment down below.